It's big, it has mechs, and it has stunning artwork. But is it any good? Let's review it! This is the review for the game Scythe, the good and bad about it. By the end of this review, you will know if this game is for you. We have seven burning questions to answer about this game, but before we do that, Yanis, what is this game all about? Scythe is a competitive economic strategy game where players control nations in an alternate history, where right after World War I, there are mechs. Players have workers and mechs and they build structures and they're trying to gain points from all these things. And by the end of the game, who has the most victory points wins the game. In your turn, you use this pawn to place it on one of the four actions available to you. And the interesting thing is, if you did one of these actions in your previous turn, you can do it again on this turn. Each of them have two parts. One part is, for example, producing resources, and it's more connected to where you are at the map. And the other thing is more upgrading your faction and getting better uh, at you know, the game. You either do the top action, the bottom action, or both or none. Those are your options each time. So these actions help you upgrade your systems, build new facilities on the map, build mechs, these awesome things right there, or just upgrade something so you are more efficient in your future turns. And the game ends when one player has placed six stars on the board. And you place stars by achieving different things, for example, having eight workers or four mechs, and so on and so forth. We're gonna talk a lot more about this game in this video, but now it's time to go to the questions. And the first question is... Who would you buy it for? Three, two, one, let's Hello. go. Hello. Civilized diplomats, and you have. I have Euro gamers. All right, let's go with your Boring very one. fun Euro gamers. Let's go. It's for Euro gamers. I mean, it's for people who like economic games with almost no conflict. And you're gonna go, whoa! There are mechs in here. How is there no conflict? We'll talk about that later. In this game, I really enjoyed the diplomacy part. Just talking about with other players. You're not gonna go there, right? Please, no? And yes, as you said, there's not a lot of conflict. That's why Civilized. It seems like maybe it could be a war game. It's not at all. Though it depends on players. I've heard that uh, some players don't talk at all in this game. In my gaming group, we really enjoyed the talking part to be sneaky and taking some territories or some resources away from others. Next question. What is the best player count? Three, two, one. I added two to five and I thought it's probably good with any amount, but I thought ah, since I'm looking for that conflict and with just two, there's less chance to have that. Like you said, diplomacy. So, and with three to five, there's just more ways of, you know, communicating with other people. Yeah. With five, probably the games are going to be longer, even though you just have to pick one action and do that. There's still a lot of calculations involved in that. Okay, do I pick this one? Will I be able to build this? With five people, it might take a bit longer. I agree that two player game is pretty good. It's fine. But the problem was that the board is so big and if each of you start from like different sides, there's so many encounters that you can get. There's no problems with getting any resources. Fighting for regions and spaces is missing, but it's uh, fine. I would play it with two. It's not that big of a deal. But I thought that four is the best uh, amount because yes, Cold War element is much more powerful when you have uh, more players. It's really brilliant with four and that's what it's kind of meant to be. Before we jump to the next question, there's something you need to do, and that is... Subscribing to our channel and liking this video. We would really appreciate it. What's the best alternative? I'm warning you, I'm gonna cheat a bit, but you can't be mad, all right? No promises, but okay. Three, I'm... two, one, let's go. <laughs> what? <laughs> Cut it! Cut! Cut! This is a board game show. Funny thing, there is a board game, Warcraft 3. Without you knowing... That is a good alternative. This was one of my childhood classics and it's not a board game, it's a, well, I guess it is a board game now. <laughs> but I played it as a computer game and Sight really brought the same emotions to me. It's something similar, you start from one spot being like a small faction there and trying to upgrade to get more control over your area and win everybody else. This brings me back to so many memories. If somebody has played this as well and was thinking, hey, what this game could look like as a board game, then, you know, this could be it. Minus the fighting. Minus building a lot of units and trying to destroy other people's villages. No. Minus that, right? Probably everyone at this point, or most everyone has played Catan at least once. And if you haven't, you should give it a go. It is a classic. If you add cities and knights, it 
improves the game massively. For me, it has barbarians attacking, you can develop your cities way more, so there's a lot of more options. And the game obviously is longer and heavier this way. But it also feels like similar here, where you're just, you know, economically growing, and there's some area control. And you probably say, wait, 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 Catan is a very simple, light game. Yes, but add in cities and knights, and not anymore. Another thing we need to talk about is the pricing of this game, and uh, it is? $90 is the suggested retail price, and I'd say well-deserved, well-worth it, and a good price for the game. I would say it's cheap for what you get inside. There's so much stuff. All of these little pieces, the map is huge, max and everything. It's a really good price for this game. Really good price. Yeah, I agree. Next question, what is the worst thing about it? might get samey. There's not a lot of things that change from game to game. The first few times you're gonna play this game, you're gonna be super excited. It's interesting, it's different, it's really, really fun. But then after, I don't know, five times, you actually will have played uh, with all of the factions probably, as well as these player boards, they are different, so you can mix up the combinations. But other than that, a lot of the game is the same all the time. I'm not sure how long can you go without buying the expansions. This game costs 90 euros as we talked before, and then expansions will cost a bit more, so it might get pretty expensive. But now, sit back, relax, and let's start trashing this game for reals. I had expectations of this being one of the first euros where I would really feel the theme, and then there's mechs that you can get to fight other players, and there's a whole deck of events that I felt, oh my gosh, this is gonna be like Eldritch Horror, but in a Euro game world, this is gonna be amazing, which it was not. First thing is the mechs. They're pretty cool miniatures, all the factions have different variants of them, and that's it. They have no special things, those mechs, and the conflict with those mechs is gonna happen, what, once, twice per game? Maximum? Sometimes maybe no times? Where, where is the... there's no... it's... <sighs> Next thing is the event cards. Essentially, it's the same three things. You can pay nothing and get a little bit. You can pay a little bit of something and get a bit of more of something. Or you can pay a lot of something and get way more of something. And it's essentially the same three things on all event cards. Sure, there's a little bit of theme there. At least they try to put it in. But they're not thematic. And I felt, oh man, I wanted, I wanted theme. I wanted events that, you know bring out the thing, and there's none of that. And obviously you say, hey, Giannis, what were you thinking? It's a Euro game. What, what are you heading? What did you expect? And I said, well, that's what I expected. I expected thematic, you know, fighting, different events. That's what I expected, and there's none of that. And it might be just me. Most likely it is just me, right? It comes down to what are you expecting from this game. Visually, it might look like it's heavier. It might look like it will involve a lot more uniqueness. But it is awesome if you understand what it is. Next question. What is the best thing about this game? Three, two, one, go. It's a simple game in disguise. Grand scale in accessible way. It seems this massive thing with like fighting and events and it's gonna take hours when in fact it is not that complex of a game. Gives you the feel of playing this big massive fighting game in a simple way and a short amount of time. Explaining the rules might take a few minutes because there are some intricacies, but overall, after the first round, everybody will understand how to play it. You just have to move this pawn, do the things that's written there, and that's it. The things you mentioned that the worst things, I think if there would be tons of mechs and powers and stuff like that, it would be too complicated for this game. It looks great. Ooh, I mean, yes. the artwork, the game was created because the author saw the artwork. And he thought, I need to create a game around this artwork. Definitely. The board is amazing, the pieces are amazing, the looks of it is pff, amazing. Next question, when would you play it? With cold beverages. Oh, and I play it only with Fenris. And uh, Fenris is not a friend of mine or ours. Fenris is an expansion for this game. Fenris fixes my problems with this game. It adds theme, it adds a little bit more conflict, no spoilers. Because it is like a, a legacy type of expansion where you play a game and then you unlock more stuff. But it's easily resettable. You can put everything back in the boxes and play next time again. And obviously the moment of excitement is going to be gone. I'd play it only with the Rise of Fenris, which addresses the, I wouldn't say problems with this game for me, but the disappointments. Because it's a simple game, but it takes 
a lot of time to play it. It's 115 minutes here, I think, but it's a lot more than that, I think. Where was that? What's the time? I How long do you play it? Yeah, 115 minutes, yep. That's very specific, yeah. I would love to play this game when you get comfortable, you have a good time, you have a lot of time to play it. You can get some cold beverages, because it also helps with the conversations that you have, which I really enjoyed about this game. You can play it, of course, a lot more serious and have more strategies, but you can also play it more, more calm down and um, just enjoy your time. And now, the final rating. <laughs> Hangover! I'm kidding, it's not. Or is it? Ooh. I have it fantastic, or a must-have for five games. Comes back to what you said, it's gonna get samey, right? Yeah, absolutely. I think if you enjoy Euro games, if you would like everything that we previously mentioned, how this game goes with the diplomacy and all that, then I think you must play this, you must have this. But be warned that, yeah, after five games, it might get samey, and as Jans mentioned, you have to have the expansion uh, to make it uh, more interesting. It was absolutely must-have for me and my five games, and I think it's still must-have for me, and I'm actually looking towards uh, buying maybe the expansion as well, because uh, you sold it to me. If you watch this review, you know now what to expect from this game, and if what you can expect from this game is something you enjoy, then it's a must-have for you as well. For me, it is okay as a vanilla game, but if you add the Fenris, I think, and I was thinking if it takes me up to fantastic or really good, but I think it does take me up to fantastic. Fenris just adds ton of stuff. There's actually a story now and there's some mystery to what's happening there. So it, it, it takes me up to a fantastic. My biggest problem was just okay because I had such high expectations. Just lower expectations and you'll probably love this game. So now you know if this game is for you. And if you enjoyed this type of reviews, then be sure to subscribe, like and share and all do all the good stuff. That will help us a lot. And thank you for watching and see you next time. Okay. See ya. Thank you.